Stage Dramas present The Sultan of Zanzibar. Would you mind if I interrupt this program to bring our listeners an announcement of unusual interest concerning a feature beginning in next Sunday's issue of the American Weekly? Not at all, especially if it is about the new series of front covers of the American Weekly by the renowned American artist James Montgomery Flagg. You guessed it. This Sunday, the first of seven lovely paintings for the great American artist James Montgomery Flagg appears in full color on the front cover of the American Weekly. Each of the paintings is a tribute to Cooking Around America. We owe a great deal to the pioneer women of the early days of the nation. They gave America a heritage of traditional dishes, of cooking of wide variety. The preparation of these typical American dishes provided the inspiration for Flagg's delightful series of seven paintings. Each is devoted to a favorite regional dish of a geographical division of this country. And for the next seven weeks, the pictures will be reproduced in full color on the front page of the American Weekly. In addition, these works of art will be accompanied by easy-to-follow recipes supplied by prominent women who know how to prepare and cook regional delicacies. I feel sure that every woman listening to this program will want to say the excellent recipes and the seven unusual paintings. So be sure to look for this extraordinary feature beginning in Sunday's issue of the American Weekly. And to the men of our audience, I might add that Cooking Around America gives a new slant to an old topic that will interest you as much as it will the women. I know because I've had a preview of these paintings and the recipes. So don't forget to order for the family your copy of the American Weekly, which comes to you each week with your Hearst Sunday newspaper. And now to our story. Neville Chamberlain, Britain's umbrella-carrying prime minister, the personification of English serious-mindedness, got the world's greatest practical joker for a brother-in-law when he married. The late William Horace Severe Cole, Mrs. Chamberlain's 56-year-old brother, who died in the south of France two years ago. His prank tickled the rather staid Britishers. He became a sort of national jester. He's missed these days when John Bull could stand a lot more harmless humor to offset his frenzied diplomacy and his grim preparation for war. He staged his first real hoax while a student at Cambridge University. One day, the mayor of Cambridge was running as fast as his legs could carry him toward the college, waving a telegram in the air. At the college, the mayor was admitted to the dean's office, where he planked the telegram down on the desk and sank exhausted into a chair. See, the Sultan of Zanzibar is coming. Coming today. See the city and the college. Here. Yeah. Read the telegram from His Majesty. Please. A royal message uh, from my soul. Uh, his Serene Highness, the Sultan of Zanzibar, will arrive at 4 p.m. on an official visit to the city and colleges of Cambridge. And this will be obtained at befitting his rank and station, Edward Jack Interrupter. Uh, well, 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 this is indeed an unexpected honor. God heavens, man, is that all you can say? Do you realize what time it is? It's past noon, and His, his Serene Highness will arrive in less than four hours. Yeah, by Joe, that is rather short notice, isn't it? Short notice, short notice. I should jolly well say it is short notice. It means we've got to decorate the streets and, and buildings, or arrange a banquet, to recruit a reception committee, a thousand and one things. Quite so, quite so. Oh, good heavens, man, how can you sit there so calm and passive? What are we going to do? Suggest something. Suggest something? Yes. What would you suggest I suggest? Well, I suggest that you suggest... Oh, bother. So, now, you, you take care of getting the colleges ready. I, I'll take care of the city. I'll send word. Let me see. I'll send you word of the tale and ceremonies later. I'm yes. off to the town hall now. Miss <laughs> Gates. Miss Gates. Why, whatever is the matter with your work? Oh, oh, sit down. You look as if you had a stroke. Confound it all. I will have a stroke if people don't behave a little more normally. I'm quite normal, I'm sure. Oh. Your worship, but you... Oh, Will you stop trying to tell me things and let me tell you something, Miss Bates? At four o'clock this afternoon, His Serene Highness, the Sultan of Zanzibar, will be here. The Sultan of Zanzibar? Yes, the Sultan of Zanzibar. I received a telegraphic order from His Majesty the King to receive and entertain him in a manner befitting his rank and station. Now, look, first I want you to, to round up the caterers and arrange a banquet. Uh, a royal banquet, mind you. Then take your list. You know, the one we use for the reception of distinguished guests. Uh, issue the invitations, the formal dress, and all that sort of thing. Very well, Your Worship. 
I will attend to it at once. Yes, please do, please do. Now, where will the reception committee assemble to meet his height? Well, now, at right. Here at the town hall or at the railway station? Why, at the railway station, of course. How else would his highness be traveling? I couldn't say, unless by horse and carriage. Horse and carriage is ridiculous, utterly ridiculous. It's far too far to come from London by horse and carriage. Oh, but why am I standing here? There's the decorations to think of. Where's old George, Miss Gatesby? Down in the cellar, oh. enjoying his midday nap, I should say. Oh, very good, very good. You take care of the banquet arrangements. I'll find old George. I'll... George! I say, George! Oh, George, there you are. Oh, I'm glad you're here. Eh? What did you say, you worship? I say, I'm glad you're here. Hey, yes, yes, I can hear you as long as he keeps my voice up. Yes, yes. Uh, well, hurry, George. Get out the bunting. Uh, it's a much too early. My uh, next meeting around the until October. I didn't say anything about hunting. Uh, I said bunting, bunting. Oh, uh, that'd be fine. It'd be cool on the river. Oh, right. Though I'd be a mite old for it. George, George, in the name of... Listen, I want you to get out the flags and bunting. Oh. Flags and bunting. Oh, why didn't you say so in the first place? Oh, uh, is something up, Mayor? Yes. The Sultan of Zanzibar is coming. Uh, who's coming, Mayor? The Sultan of Zanzibar, an oriental potentate. Uh, I, I can hear thee, but I can't understand thee, Mayor. The Sultan. The Sultan of O. Oh, the Sultan of O. And who be... Oh, that? never mind who it is. Get out the flags and bunting. Get get work and decorate the buildings and streets. Hey, sweet. I, I oh. do enjoy a pitman drop now and again to talk on. No, no, no. But what have the sweets got to do with the sultan? No, no. Do we like sweets? I shall go mad. Stop raving, man. Stop raving, man. <laughs> With his blood pressure at a record high, the mayor rounded up workmen, and with the none too helpful aid of old George, the mayor had all the main streets decorated with flags and bunting. The hastily prepared banquet was arranged at the town hall, and as the zero hour of four approached, the whole town turned out at the railway station to welcome the royal visitors. Let me see what time it is. Have I got time to run through my seat to welcome again, Dean? Oh, hardly, Your Worship. No, dear, dear. Matter of fact, the train should be approaching the station this very moment. Yes, yes, as well. If it is a little late, it's still do no harm. I'll have that much more time to compose myself. <sighs> I've had that today in all my life. Oh, uh, I tried to contact uh, London, Your Worship. Yes. But can't get them. Oh, dear. I'm sure none of the stations at the line know anything about a special train coming what? through. Oh, no, no, of course not. No, no, it was probably arranged with such short notice that the line has been cleared at London. <laughs> They've held up the departure of trains there. Oh, dear. <laughs> Oh, you worship. <laughs> the funniest thing happened. Oh, go away. Now, go away. <laughs> this is no time for hilarity or jokes. This is the royal reception. I reckon as you know best, your worship. But, <laughs> but Miss Geist, they sent you. Yes. He's gone, and he ain't half answering the door. <laughs> what, what, what's that you're saying, child? <laughs> Who's gone? His iron and carriage and hair. What? White horses and all. Well. <laughs> but there wasn't no one there. Oh, dear, except dear. me and old George. <laughs> and he be too deaf to you. Oh, dear, dear. <laughs> Good gracious and worship. We're lost. Do you realize the child is saying? Uh, His Serene Highness has arrived by horse and carriage in the town hall. All right. All right. Bless my soul in the study. Hurry. Come on. Run down to the town hall. The town hall. He arrived. No one there to bring him. Oh, how humiliating. How oh, very Oh, a thousand pardons. You're three hundred for this most unfortunate person. Well, we naturally thought you would arrive by train. Hence, we gathered at the railway station to welcome you. I thought you would give us this regrettable error. There is for some sort of fragment of any nefari poli of Kimeno. You saw some history right off. Oh, and now, your three hundred are on behalf of... But the citizens of this fair old city, the faculty and student body of its great university, we, uh, I mean, uh, uh, yes, your serene highness, in the name of the fair city of Cambridge, its citizen, its great university, its faculty and student body, I bid you welcome and extend to you freedom and hospitality of the city and university of Cambridge. Uh, Exterior post of sort of fragment of any parapoli, my inner goem, Kalifatamino, Yapto. Sultan, say thank you too much also. Oh, thank you. 
And if your serene highness is ready, we will proceed on our tour of inspection of the city, to be followed by a visit to the university, and hence to the banquet that we have prepared in your honor. Det kan inte på sitt säga att hon är före polis. Sultan har inte på sitt. Ja, det är det. Quite so, på sitt. Your language is most effective, your highness. With all the pomp and dignity at his command, yet perspiring profusely and rather jittery, the embarrassed mayor led the grand tour, and then as a climax came the grand banquet. After all the ceremonies had been gone through and the expressions of appreciation expressed, the Sultan and his party said goodbye to the mayor and his committee and rode off into the night. Once out of earshot and at a safe distance from the town, there was a spontaneous explosion of laughter from the Sultan and his (laughs) aides. It was priceless. It was absolutely priceless. And they really swallowed the whole thing. I'll never forget that picture of the mayor and the dean holding up their gowns. Rounding up the road. But they discovered we hadn't arrived. But my carriage, the town hall, it was most amazing. William Allboy, you'll never see it, but a joke of that would have you looked at me. Quiet, you infidel. The thousand feet. There is for some sort of pragmatism in the party. of one of the many priceless practical jokes staged by the brother-in-law of England's Prime Minister, Neville Chamberlain, the late Honorable William Horace Devere Cole. A full account of the Honorable Mr. Cole's many hoaxes is to be found in an amusing article entitled Why Great Britain Misses Her Cleverest Practical Joker, which appears in next Sunday's issue of the American Weekly. Join the millions of Americans who each Sunday find the greatest enjoyment in the many fine articles and feature fictions by the world's best writers in every issue of the American Weekly, the magazine with the greatest circulation in the world, which comes to you each Sunday with your Hearst Sunday newspaper. 